What becomes then of the slothful servant? What becomes of the lazy person that hides their talent in the ground and expects spirits to work on their behalf? Hey, I was speaking about how people are made lazy by witchcraft. What then becomes of the slothful servant? A, a covetous man or a covetous woman is, is produced out of that. You end up envying people who genuinely work hard. You end up envying people who put in the time. Like I said, who work by the sweat of their brow to get ahead. You envy them because they've got raw, unadulterated talent and skill, which you lack. They are working like a monster, sweating it out every single day while you just merely glide by trusting your spirits to carry you along. Trusting your dark spirits. And when then you covet a person for working hard. It's exactly what happened with me at MTN. When then you covet a person who works hard, what do you do? You just move them out the way. You just move them out the way. You're like, ugh, I envy Garabo, so she gotta go. Where am I gonna go? I've been unemployed for almost a decade because somebody coveted my raw skill, my raw talent, my work by the sweat of my brow, my skills-based promotion acquisition, as opposed to my demon-inspired promotion acquisition. I worked to get to where I got. I burnt the midnight oil. I put in the time. And today I am unemployed almost a decade because some witches who got ahead using spirits that made them buoyant up the corporate ladder, that put jet fuel behind E. Ezizabo to climb up the corporate ladder while also climbing that ladder using body parts of people, cadavers. Do you understand? Those guys kicked out those who actually excellently worked worked hard. So today I am unemployed despite being as hardworking as I am because witches have seen it fit to just extract me out of the environment because they end up envying those among God's entire human race that actually work. Witchcraft takes away anonymity. Sorry, it takes away the visibility of deeds creating a veil of anonymity. And in that anonymity, there is so much theft, so much theft that happens that these people um, anticipate that insofar as they can carry on like this they will be super wealthy eventually they steal Garabo's future they steal Garabo's everything in order to keep themselves aloft Satan has to take from somewhere in order to give to another place so upon I told you nah, I'm not cursed guys I'm a child of God but the Lord has left me in this position that I might tell the story for such a time as this basically all right but there are people who aren't born again who are successfully actually stolen from and the ramifications of that is suicide sometimes guys if at all you were thriving like you worked wait again you went to varsity wafunda you opened those thick textbooks and you actually consumed all that content while graduate and then you find yourself in corporate and you then all of a sudden lose them seven or you can't get your promotion or isn't like you're just struggling even though you had these dreams you wanted to be this and that you wanted to do that and the other and now you can't stuff like that causes people since it is their purpose it's what they call call their purpose if then you can't walk in your purpose sometimes they go and they grab a noose and they commit suicide Suicide. That is why South Africa has the highest suicide in the world, coming second to no one but Russia. It's because it's a witchcraft land, it's pagan. And they are blocking people's destinies, frustrating them sufficiently enough to imagine there is no point in living anymore. Because if I can't do what I have always dreamt I wanted to do from childhood, then why carry on? They're killing people. These are the unintended consequences. If I was not in Christ, I would have been subjugated to the tyranny of suicide because of the fact that people would have been like, I'm sorry, I don't care, you have dreams. I don't care that you have dreams you're just gonna stop just like that i wound up i found myself getting coveted envied by um, numerous wishes in the office and in that hair because i was not responsive to sorcery like i told you i don't know how many guys had put love curses on me that i did not love blessings or spells they're just curses guys who try to get me to be with them using witchcraft upon still being garabo and disinterested in them having no feelings for the holy spirit covers me they got frustrated they, they get frustrated when a person is not doing what they want they start they, they end up feeling entitled they end up feeling entitled to getting whatever they want through witchcraft because they feel like the giddy balls are, hey? They're seated on some kind of a, a throne holding a scepter and when they bash it against the ground, the world around them must shake. And when people don't shake, they then target them. That's how Christians end up getting targeted. When people don't respond to witchcraft, they target them because they feel like I am the thing to which you are supposed to bow down. Therefore, I'm going to throw you in a lion's den. It is exactly the Nebuchadnezzarik um, phenomenon where it is that the dude builds a statue, all right, of himself and then tells everybody in the ecosystem to worship at its feet. And when then they don't, they then get thrown into the fire. And so your name is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It is, uh, you know, Daniel in 
in the lion's den type scenario where Darius is forced to throw Daniel in the lion's den because of a decree or an edict that the dude must worship at the feet of some golden statue. That is what under heaven they end up like. They have the pomp and the arrogance of kings of old that upon using esoteric power, random funny fluffy occult power, then see the power in it and expect people to therefore worship at their feet and when they don't they target them. So those that get targeted are those that don't respond appropriately to their witchcraft. It is the woman that you send Corobella that still looks at you like oh, really no it's okay. It is the um, a, a tender boss leader guy that still decides to go and give the contender to somebody else and not you that you then target with sorcery. It is the um, colleague that you have bewitched to basically throw drop the ball on her job but she's still the best uh, employee of the month and the year and the second. It is those people who were upon fopa 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 witchcraft fopa and nje, nothing happens because they are sturdy and firm in Jesus that they then literally isolate their bull's eye on put it on their back and then they like just a hail of bullets uh, until eventually one about drops to the ground like when you target them that harshly it is those that don't bow kneel down that find themselves in some funny little strait find themselves in prison because their name is joseph and they've been accused by potiphar's wife of rape because she didn't want them because she did not want him type of, because he did not want her sorry yeah type establishment thing so nay i was a, a fervent believer in the, in the lord jesus christ as a christian i was indwelt by the holy spirit still am um and so i did not react expectedly expectedly uh, to their sorcery and so they zoned in on me it's like they you know tapered their attention to me and a barrage of insults came at me and collectively they then knocked me down i was not dropping the ball on the job i did however on the daily feel very exhausted i was tired i struggled to wake up in the morning to go to work but i pushed anyway because i was making war with the spirits that were all over the show i was still delivering higher quality work it did not matter what they did to me i strove all they did was exhaust me with witchcraft they just exhausted me they made me tired all the time but it did not prosper to make me stop doing what i was doing so they just knocked me out altogether long story short they end up abusive and psychotic they end up wearing a mental illness they end up just these super megalomaniacal manipulators of people's entire lives and they want to hold them in little cells where they get to tell them almost like with a linear regression constraint set how far they will go and no further they tell them that you can only earn this much uh, in terms of a salary they tell them you can have only this many children you can never get married so if you want kids you're gonna have to have them out of wedlock you are going like they literally go and they chart a linear regression constraint set for people and they put them in the middle so people walk in all directions and they keep on hitting brick walls they keep on hitting ceilings and they can't move beyond what it is that they planned to do and so in frustration some of them grab a noose and they hang themselves that's what Labatagati do. Now, when you are a member of such a mutiny as that, what in the world is the, what are the odds or the probabilities that you will be happy in life? You are just a perpetual thief. You walk in psychosis, you are, you are schizophrenic, you've got some kind of diagnosable mental illness. However, nobody is getting around fast enough to recommending that you see as a therapist. But they end up crazy. Let me move on to the next part.